lo manga kavade ito na ito na ito na ito na thank you 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 wow it is my pleasure to invite you to join us members to this channel that's for giving tv um, how to become content creator of the year where we had our US counterparts to share tips on like how creators can really groom and grow their channels right and I think for today um, the workshops that we have um, it, for this week as well as next week these are really aimed to help you as a content creator to be able to equip yourself and I guess have a bigger picture as well of what are the possible ways that you can actually make content creation and especially gaming content creation um, as a way for a living uh, in the long term as well right so um, I think before we move on like Marky why don't you share a bit um, with our audience members uh, about how what is the topic that we're going to be talking about Recording today in progress Thanks. Kylie, hello again everyone. Uh, echoing what Kylie just said, uh, in these sessions we'll help, uh, we'll cover important topics to help you guys, gaming creators, to scale up growth and earnings from your YouTube channels. In today's session, uh, one of Southeast Asia's premier or top gaming uh, team, our partner, Evos, will be sharing with you some key learnings and how they were really successfully able to groom some of the biggest gaming creators in Southeast Asia. And also, if you haven't registered yet, on July 28th, we'll walk you through some journey of our gaming creators in Southeast Asia and share with you some of their secrets on how they were really able to earn and make a living uh, from doing what they love with this content creation. So it's really an exciting session. If you have any questions along the way, whether it be in English or Tagalog, just drop it in the Q&A section. And hopefully we'll discuss it right after the presentation. Thank you everyone. Back to you, Kylie. Awesome. So it's definitely an exciting lineup of workshops to help creators like yourself. So again, like what Marky mentioned, if you do if you do have any questions, there is a Q&A box at the bottom. Um, please go ahead and use it. You can ask in English, ask in Tagalog. It's fine as well. We will definitely get to your questions at the end of the workshop. Um, and you're definitely going to want to stay till the end as well because we'll be sharing with you how you can walk away with some exclusive YouTube merchandise um, at the end of this workshop as well. And if you do want to reach out to us for us to partner you on your journey as a gaming creator, we would be happy um, to have a chat with you as well. Um, but first, before we before we jump straight into today's segment where we will have Hartman, the co-founder of Evos, to share more about um, Evos's journey and how, how they help content and creators, Marky, um, please tell our audience members how they can walk away with YouTube merchandise. Yes, for the fun part, at the end of the webinar, we'll be sending you a link. Just click on it and drop us a feedback for a chance to win an exclusive YouTube merchandise. So you better tune in till the end for the link. Thanks, guys. All right, and now we'll be sharing with you a little clip or a little trailer of who Evos is in case you haven't heard of it before Hartman comes on to share together with us in our fireside chat about the Evos journey. So sit back and
All right. Okay. So that was a really cool trailer um, of EVOS. So for those of you who just streamed in, um, I think we are in for a treat today because we have Hartman, the co-founder of EVOS Esports, um, to join us today, right? To share with us a little bit about the EVOS story um, and really how their team has helped um, countless of creators in the region, um, like yourself, right? To make a living um, out of um, out of gaming, right? And making content on gaming. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Hartman on the line. So hi Hartman, um, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, hi, how are hi. you? Hi, I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Good, good, thanks. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> and so, yeah, so we'll see. Great, super excited to have you here. So I think maybe before we dive right in, right, like why don't you introduce yourself as well as like, give us to our audience today? Sure. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Hartman. Um, so I co-founded with my partners um, Evos a little bit about five years ago. Um, we started in Indonesia, and right now we have about ten teams and in five countries, right? And thankfully, with you know with the whole internet thing and the boom of uh, I would say mobile esports as well, we're able to be one of the largest esports organizations in the world currently um, in terms of social media following so yeah we were quite blessed and very excited to do this as well all right cool thank you so much so um i think i mean i did a little bit of like my own like research on evos right and looking a little bit on the articles that's all out there um, about evos and your team so i think one really interesting about evos that i noticed was that i think you guys started as an esports team right and then you kind of transitioned into making content and gaming content and gaming entertainment content yeah. and going into maybe gaming lifestyle as well yeah. um so i think uh, in that segment moving from like just being a team alone and into like that gaming content space right there's a lot of like different options that gaming creators have to do whether they want to go into being a pro player or whether they just want to be a casual gaming content creator or influencer and just understanding like the different ways that you could monetize from those different routes right i think those were some of the questions that our audiences had when they joined us in this segment and before they signed up for this segment right so maybe to start off like from your experience of building like evos right could you share with us like why was there that shift right from being just an esports team um, and into like gaming content creation yeah um i mean i i think it's not so much a shift as it is more of like unlocking the potential of each gaming creator or uh, player or athlete as we call it right um, so as as we know um, since way back when and, and I'm right now gaming is not so much a hobby as it is uh, a lifestyle as well so what what would you like to say is that we are trying to engage with our audience in uh, through different dimensions as well so the first one would definitely be gaming and then you have you know your music um, everybody loves music you have your content and then you have your um, fashion as well and then you have all these other things um, that really supports the ecosystem of what gaming actually is so with streaming and content creation it allows us to uh, number one i guess humanize uh, number two is also give people a better understanding of what their day-to-day -day is like and and you know i think um, when we first started it's, it's all about it was all about like um, game plays and you rarely see who the people are behind that tag name right behind that id uh you know but then after we did a little um, some clips on um, our players you know some clips on their background um, even interviewing their parents or um, close friends and stuff like that people really resonated with that and and, and really love the idea of oh okay wow my my favorite um dota player or my favorite uh, mobile legends player or free fire player or whatever uh, uh pubg player is really um i'll say real right it, it sounds kind of uh, silly but it's very different because you know when, when you're looking at um, michael jordan he is real you, you, you kind of see him you know he's there he's playing basketball he's real but then when, when, when you're looking at your favorite athlete or, or idol playing that particular game, you don't really feel that it's real. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, it could be an animation or whatever, right? But then when you're, you only feel that it's really, really, you're really absorbing the whole energy and vibe when you're watching them live and you're seeing them and they're interacting with you, right? And I, I 
believe that you know through streaming um you know of course with the whole um advance in, in technology that really allows us to do streaming content creation and and that allows us to be able to engage with the audience like never before um really personal and really direct and i think one of the biggest draws of why that is so so attractive is because uh, us as fans were able to watch them really grow so mm. most of the people definitely started off um you know excluding all the celebrities yeah so like really really gaming creators they started off with zero subscribers and then to see them from like 100 subscribers all the way to 10 million to 20 million that's like amazing right you feel like you really know them and especially when they give you shout outs and stuff like that it's like oh wow okay i'm i he, he notices me or she notices me you know, I'm, i'm here you know so so yeah so that's that's part of the reason so really about unlocking potential right cool super cool right so i think you were talking about unlocking potential i think essentially um not just about like for gaming creators it's not just about winning games anymore but i think thinking as yourself really as a content creator and how do you tell that story of yourself and that journey of yourself um as that creator right and not just showing kate showing kate's like showing people that oh like this is all I am, but showing the different dimensions of yourself. So I think yeah. that's really super interesting, right? And um, and I also noticed, right, on EVOS TV, since you mentioned about the different um, types of content formats, I also looked at EVOS TV and realized there's so many different content formats that um, EVOS has kind of ventured into, right, on your main platform, um, on YouTube, right? So you have talk shows, you have game shows, mm-hmm. you have game highlights, there's blogs, right? And there are also player highlights and spotlights. And I think that list, goes on right so what like made you guys also go into and venture into experimenting with so many different content formats right because i think for some of our gaming creators here it's not something that they might be naturally inclined to yeah. think about right but yeah so why venture into so many different content formats um it's really out of i guess necessity uh i mean us as people behind the scene uh you know we are always still trying to find ourselves as well so that's one of the things um um and and what we tell them as well is really to find yourself right um and trying different content formats helps you do that so for instance like um uh Dylan Pros one of our creators as well um he is into a variety of different games and that's what he really really likes and there's a lot of people who are I'll say multi game players right our uh, content creators or there are certain ones who are just really into that one single game which is fine right both is fine um then you explore your other sort of interest um through your work and that's what it is and that's what the i'll say the artistry or or the beauty in creating that sort of content uh comes because i mean i think it's it's different from i would say like tv stations or like radio stations or like movies or uh, otts and stuff like that whereby you kind of have a set guideline of what you have to do and what you can and cannot do uh versus youtube um you can literally do anything right so with like you know back again to the little pros you know he made short movies we helped him make skits we hate we helped him make a talk show and, and all that stuff but all that is through discovering yourself again and also really knowing what your fans like so when we sort of rewind like five years ago um, i would say the audience's needs are quite basic right so they're more into the game uh, gameplay content and things like that being funny whatever and like what have you right and then after that you know they, they become more mature so they really want to know you know how do i become a good player right so so tips and tricks so, that, so that's a different content format again and then from there they kind of want to know who is the person behind the screen so then you have your vlogs and your things like that so who is the people around him so that's a different block all by itself again and then you start doing more creative stuff which is um from your branded content um from your short skits short movies right and all that stuff so it's really more about discovering what your fans want and as they much work um you know we really want to rival with other i would say ott platforms right in terms of the quality of the content except in youtube it's free right 
great, cool. Um, I think since we're on the topic of Dylan, and I think a bit of Dylan's journey, right, of um, of where he was and where he is now, could you share with us? I mean, because Dylan, I think, is one of the biggest, like, um, creators, at least in Asia, um, in the gaming space, right, in peace with your team, right? So um, could you share with us, like, where was Dylan, like, when he first started and, like, where is he now, right? Like, how has Evos, like, gone through that journey together with him? Right, so, um, funny story, um, actually, he, 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 when we first talked to him, um, he started out with, I think it was, like, 70,000, it was definitely less than 100,000 subscribers, right? Wow. Um, and, well, well, wow, but back then, it was actually, uh, one of the larger ones, right, um, sort okay. of, right, for, for actually for gaming, right? But what's interesting was that, um, you know, a lot of the, back then, the, the mobile boom was starting to happen, mm -hmm. and a lot of his peers, I would say, just started, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas he was actually one of the first few ones. So he, when he was at 100,000, he was actually doing it for three years already, <sighs> right? And it was pretty slow, but... He was really passionate about it, and you know he was doing a lot of um, reviews on other games, um, PC games, um, console games, mobile games, and, and whatever, right? And and the number of mobile games was actually a huge, huge um, variety. And then from there, but you can see really like his dedication um, on improving it. So if you look at a lot of, uh, so I I I watch a lot of um, tech review. Um, I would say channels as well. Uh, if you know MKBHD, that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite channels as well. If you look at his first, first um, ever video, it's pretty amateurish, right? So that was what Dylan's videos were like back then as well. And it grew and grew and grew. And then, you know, he started buying an SLR and then he started buying like this, this equipment, that uh, dongle, that uh, jib and, and all that stuff, right? Too really try to improve because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that um, they think streaming is just like a webcam right but the, mm. these people when they do it it's legit they have an actual SLR <laughs> as their webcam right and and you don't see it but when you compare it side by side it really gives the fans a much better experience than you would if you had like a you know $20 webcam right so right. all these little things is, is about really dedicating yourself and really trying to improve yourself on a day to day. Um, and, and that's what we try to help him with as well. But also, I think it's undeniable that his passion is really gaming. Mm. Um, you know, he finishes um, like PS5 titles in within like a day or two. And it, it's really insane. But he really enjoys it. And, and that's mm. what drives him. And I think for him, it's, it's really, really a blessing that he can find his passion and calling and being able to make money as well all in one um, yeah and, and being able to support his family and stuff so yeah it's, it's, it's amazing and of course I think you know th there's a lot of ups and downs mm. I think um, when he was at 100,000 he joined us and I think he shot up to like a million uh, two million really easily but then it was pretty stagnant afterwards you know so we were brainstorming you know uh, this and that but then uh, I think it's all about timing as well and it's about um, I guess seizing the opportunity so when the time is right and you are seizing the opportunity then you boom so when he was at two three he was stagnant and then you know he uh, after a while he jumped uh, and to five and then ten and then now he's like uh, 14 or something right and I think a lot of it has to do with also his ability to adapt mm. um i think you know following the trend is nice but you have to sort of see when the wave starts to crash right and then you are able to ride another wave um being able to be passionate about what you do at, at the same time and still being able to um i guess be creative in what you do yeah so a lot of dedication right well like it sounds like a lot i think from the journey that you just like explained so far, it sounds like I think being a content creator and being a game creator, there's a lot to think about, right? Like just beyond um, which gaming titles you play, but also thinking about how do you come up with like that content strategy for yourself. And I think for an individual like content creator, which I think most of the, the audience members here, maybe today, right? Well, just like starting out, just trying to find your footing, right? Like what would be actually your advice to them as they're trying to figure out like 
or, or in your words, I guess, like discover themselves and like their content style. Right. I, I think so. That's a tough question, actually, because <laughs> to, to sum it up, it's really about discovering yourself. Right. We so we have players who aren't really um, what's the word? Maybe like extroverted, maybe mm. or, or or willing to expose themselves. Right. So then it's their choice, and and, and they're okay, and, and they make a pretty good living as a pro player as well. Right. So it's not an either or, but it's definitely tough doing um, a pro player and a content creator at the same time. Mm. But with dedication, definitely you are able to do that. But again, like for me, I, I don't think I'll be able to do that because you, you kind of have to think on the spot while playing and be mm. entertaining while looking at the chats and responding wow. to the chats as well, right? So that's streaming. Right. And then content creation is more on, I would say, um, pre-planning and being able to engage with your audience time and time again, right? So if you're not able to do that and get energy from that it will be very tiring and then and then after some time you definitely would have a period of stagnation and not be able to come up with any more ideas right um so so the question really is do you want to expose yourself um, that's number one and, and how do you discover yourself because it's i i would say um I, I guess this is my own personal take on this is that you are very very you're in a very vulnerable spot when you are online and live mm. right as with i think like news anchors and all that stuff but then uh, even more prevalent in our digital ecosystem where you're you're uh you're an influencer and people would dm you like mm. nasty stuff right mm. or like comments uh and and you have to be able to take that right so, so one of the stories was that um, one of our players, um, he at the time he was actually one of the best, uh, but he was really really young. He was at uh, uh, 16 or 17 at that time, and um, he was one of the best in the country. But you know, people make mistakes all the time. You know, even the greats like Michael Jordan and, and what have you, right? Mm. But so so at that age, and then getting bombarded by all these negative comments was a huge blow. And then, mm. so that was something that we had to get him out of, right? Mm. Um, and he wasn't a content creator. Uh, he was just, you know, a popular pro player, I would say, right? Mm. Uh, he wasn't a content creator. He was a, a, a live streamer and all that stuff. So imagine being that, but multiplied by 10, which is what you are when you're a content creator. So all the comments would be nasty. You know, some, some of them would be nasty. 50% would be nasty. Some of them would be nice, of course, right? And then you have your DMs and what have you. So you have to be really mentally strong and be able to work hard and take criticisms, I guess. So I, I think like going back to like Dylan Pros and, and a lot of our content creators um, examples would be they, they have a lot of time between when they started and now to quit, but mm. they didn't, right? Because they believe and what little money they had uh, 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 in terms of income what, what they were able to generate back then was was were, 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 were enough for them to be happy and content to get to the next stage, right? Um, it's similar to EVOS. When, when we first started, our sponsorships were in, um, we were paid in keyboards, oh, right? Okay. And in, yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, and in monitors, right? And then right. I, I remember it, um, one of the first few um, moments we were so, so happy was when we were sponsored a uh, food voucher, right? Which was sort of like money. So it was a right hailing app, right? Mm -hmm. So we were sponsored a food voucher. So monthly we could use it. And it was two to three hundred dollars a month for the entire team, mm -hmm. for the entire event. So. But we were really happy because you know it actually had a dollar amount to it, and and mm. you know and then we progressed from there. So so with you know with Evos with the content creators and everything, I think there were a lot of time and moments that we definitely wanted to quit and couldn't quit. But then we wouldn't be here today talking to you, right? <laughs> um, you know. So so thankfully, I, I think you you need a lot of. I think with any artist like musicians or painters or what have you, right? You need a lot of grit and 
somehow being able to be really certain of yourself, mm. but yet be adaptable. If that kind of makes sense, right. it's, it's kind of weird, but yeah. So you have to be really sure of yourself, but read the terrain. I would say, yeah. Right. Mm, but no, I think that completely makes sense, right? And I think it's super inspiring to also know that I think like everybody kind of like started off from somewhere, and I think it's very real that um, at some point, like in the content creators journey, or even like for a pro player, like what you mentioned, like you have to learn how to deal with criticisms, right? You need to learn how to not let all these like negative like comments like hold you back, right? Um, and I think for some of our audience members today, like beyond also, like, I guess that passion and having that grit, right? I think also like what you mentioned at the end of the day, like for content creators and for the gaming creators who are here today, I mean, we're all here also because we want to be able to make this as something that's sustainable for us to, to feed our families or to even feed ourselves, right? To bring food to the table. Um, so realistically, I think understanding like there is a different, a bit of a difference between like being a pro player and a gaming content creator. Could you also help our audience to maybe break it down a bit right between like this two like what is the difference um between being a pro player and a gaming content creator and then the next question i would have as well would be then like what would be the different monetization options right the income options that would come from these two different routes right um so so um a pro player uh, i guess would would just be an actual athlete right so when they're an actual athlete, their, their full time is really about um, training as hard as they can, winning championships and all that stuff. So one of the um, um, income streams would be um, salary for the teams or the organizations. Number two would be like the tournament or the leagues when they win, uh, you know, number one or you know, top prize or second prize or whatever. And then third, usually like, like other um, traditional sports athletes and, um, and, and whatnot, you would generally be a little bit more popular. Right, uh, when the game is popular, you're popular, so you would be able to get some endorsement deals. So, uh, like on social media or um, yeah, what have you, right? But then, um, so, so that is one full-time job, and then if you are ready to embark on a second full-time job, then that would be the content creation part, right? Um, so, I, I guess that will be where um, a little bit more of um, the income could be from potentially unlocking that. Um, so content creators, you know, you, you you have a full-time, second full-time job of really trying to figure out what your passion is, what videos you want to make, and how do you want to engage with your fans, right? So that'd be from branded content or um, content that is, I would say, sponsored to your channel or your YouTube videos, right? And also live streaming. So live streaming, you know, you get um, um, a myriad of different platforms actually paying you. So we mm -hmm. do help um, our players and our content creators get streaming contracts as well. Um, so that's one. Um, so it's really a two full-time job. So it's not impossible, but definitely takes a lot of your time um, and it's quite tiring. So a lot of them actually have, have difficulties balancing, especially when you're trying to be at the top of your game but also at the top of your content creation game as well. That's when a lot of people actually, if you're, they're not able to um, get a lot of, um, get under a lot of stress. And I think um, we've seen some who, well, I mean, you know, because the content creator side actually do give, does give a lot of um, extra, extra, extra income. So, they choose to retire and be a full-time content creator. Right, right, right. Super interesting. Yeah, thanks for breaking that down for us. I think I like that you also kind of mentioned that for pro players, or like when you think about being content creator and maybe being a pro player, being a content creator can sometimes also come across as a second, um, like a second career path, right? Like if you are if you are originally a pro player, and I think it's definitely tough to have to balance both, right? And I think, yeah, um, yeah thank you so much for sharing that. I think but that if, has also given. If yeah, I can share a little out. story about um, so one of our players, um, so I think one of the biggest um, YouTubers as well was just on limit, right? It's just on limit, um, and and we've worked with him as well, and still, yeah, still working with him and back then when he was a pro player as well what he would do 
would be waking up at seven in the morning, wow. and then yeah, so waking up at seven in the morning. Um, so one of the rules of being a pro player at at our site, right, um, is you have to be living full time with your other teammates, mm. right? So he'll be living in the gaming house. Um, so he would wake up at seven. He would drive back home. He would do all his content creators, creator stuff, and eat lunch and come back by one. And that's wow. when the training starts. So he would do all the training, um, and we usually we would have breaks and whatnot, and we would have training all the way until ten or twelve. And then he would do more content afterwards, and then he would sleep and he would just repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, so you know, working really, it's it's a real. Working to to I mean two full time jobs. Yeah, wow. That I think also takes a lot of discipline right, to wake up at seven a.m. in the morning every morning to yeah, to yeah. do that. Wow, that's really super impressive. I think super inspiring as well. Um, maybe I think also like shifting gears a bit, right? Because like what you mentioned about content creation, that's also some. That we are seeing a lot, also um, maybe in like the US, like creators and a lot of their pro players also have gone from being pro players and like what you said, retiring and then going down that content, pure content creation route, right? But I think yep. that's the US market, right? And now we're here in Southeast Asia where there's a lot of potential as well. So I think like looking at the US market and seeing what we have now in Southeast Asia, like what do you think are some similarities or maybe even like differences in terms of like how the two markets? Are um, when it comes to gaming and esports landscape. Um, I think so. Definitely very similar, and we learned a lot from the U.S. market as well, right? Uh, U.S., China, Korea. Those are pretty. Excuse me. Um, those are pretty huge markets, and we learned a lot from them. They, they're way more advanced, right? So, um, it's very interesting, and it's a, I would say, natural progression. Um, if you look at say Shaq, right, Shaquille O'Neal. Um, sorry if I'm using too many basketball analogies, but you know he he is one of the biggest basketball stars. After retiring, uh, he has a lot of businesses around him as well, but he still stuck around to become one of the analysts, right, uh, and has his own I would say NBA talk show and stuff like that. So it's a natural progression um, when you sort of like start retiring. Not because you don't have passion anymore for the game, but more so on because you have um, other things you want to explore mm, right. uh, outside of being a pro player. Uh, but also because, you know, when when you start, I guess, getting a little bit older, there are younger kids who have much faster reaction types, right? <laughs> but what they don't have is your wisdom, you know? Mm. Um, so, so those are some of the things, and, and that's the natural progression, I would say. Um, but one of the big... This differences, I would say, to the U.S. market, maybe not so much in, in China, but um, so U.S. and Korea would be that we are a super, super mobile-centric um, region, mm. right? Um, and and that allows us, and that allows, I guess, content to be consumed really, really anytime and anywhere. Mm. So when when I, I guess when you when you look at um, the metrics, um, I think correct me if I'm wrong, um, for for YouTube in in say the US, right? It's it's really more so being dominated by PC screens and maybe like TV right. screens as well. Um, not so much here, right? And and even here because um, in Indonesia, a lot of our fans actually watch us or uh, our content creators in 240p, right? So it's it's really getting out there and, and it's really a luxury. But because everybody is so on their mobile, and you know you're watching it on trains, cars, uh, traffic jams, motorcycles, or whatever. Right, and that, I guess, allows us to be a little bit more mainstream than